and welcome to Wallace Annenberg Pet Space. Today, we are taking over the Healthy Spot Instagram account for their adoption spotlight of our incredible adoptable animals. We are so excited today to share with you summer safety tips, and we're gonna help you meet a whole bunch of cute adoptable animals today. So, we're gonna get started here in just a second. We're letting everybody log in, we're really excited. Um, I know this time is difficult for everyone. We're all wearing masks. We're all, you know, struggling a little bit with the situation. So we're trying to make this next hour great for adoptable pets and great for you. We want to make it fun and exciting and help you keep your pets safe during the summer. So come on with me. I'm going to hand off to our lovely hosts, John and Jolie, who are sitting over here with the first of our adorable adoptable animals. We're really excited about the Healthy Spot partnership. Thank you, Healthy Spot, for letting us show up today. John and Jolie, take it from here. Hey. Hi. Thanks, Dr. JJ. Thanks, JJ. So we are excited to showcase all the awesome cats and dogs looking for loving homes, starting with two that are named after uh, sort of old Hollywood luminaries. We have Charlie right here in the black, and named after Charlie Chaplin. Yes, and this is Groucho Marx right here. Um, this is their kitten's first time out today, so we're giving them a lot of treats, as you can see. Yep, um, little are, tuna face. Yeah, um, just so they get a little more comfortable. Um, but these guys are incredibly sweet. Um, I actually picked them out myself because they are two of our biggest lap kittens that we have right now. Uh, these two definitely get glued to your lap when you come into their, <laughs> their little suite. Um, and they're really sweet and friendly, as you can see. Yeah. I know Charlie, especially every single time I go into our cat area, the scratching post, Charlie comes up and just like smooshes his face against my mask and crawls right into my lap. But as you can see, they absolutely hate treats. Um, so. <laughs> They're revolting. <laughs> um, but these kittens are really sweet. They are adoptable. I know I personally, I have two cats at home and they have made my quarantine so much better. They are just, oh, this is the face, thank you. Um, <laughs> the tune is not always greener on the other host. <laughs> um, you can have some water. Um, but <laughs> here, cross, cross okay, the streets. Cool, cool. There we go. <laughs> um, but cats are a great way um, to you know have that little companion animal with you. These guys are incredibly sweet, and they they absolutely love people. Um, <laughs> As you can see, they get very excited about treats. So yes. anyone at home who is maybe looking to adopt a cat, these little tubes are absolutely fantastic. Yep. And also <laughs> speaking of treats, we want to be sure to thank our friends at Healthy Spot for yep. partnering with us on this event. There you go, buddy. <laughs> and they ask you at home to weigh in with your questions about how to keep your pets safe and healthy as the summer months drag on and the temperature rises. So to kick things off, we're gonna go check in with JJ, who you guys have met, and our animal care specialist, Claudia, who will show ways to keep your pets safe in the summer heat. Hi. Hi, guys. Hey. <laughs> Hi, John and Julie again. Everyone, this is Claudia. Hi, guys. And more importantly, sorry, this is Rose. There we go. Do you want to tell us a little bit about Rose? Oh my gosh. Hi guys. So Rose is our six-year-old Chihuahua mix. She is one of our new guys and one of our new rescues here at Wallace Hannibal Pet Space. See, she's a super cute guy. There she is absolutely adorable. She's super cuddly. She's got an adorable little tail. I'm going to come down here with you. Yes. Oh, on cue, she wags her tail. She does. She me some treats too. Yes. So I can Let's grab, show the camera how cute you are. Yes. Good girl, there you go. Good girl. Oh, there you go. And so correct me if I'm wrong, but Rose is actually a part of a group of dogs named after Star Wars characters, right? Yes, she is. She, yes, she is. Definitely. She has the best friend here, Asuka. <laughs> nice. And I think we'll be seeing Han and Leia later in the program, right? We will. We will. We've got a whole bunch of Star Wars characters. So she'd make a great pet for anyone, really. She's absolutely amazing. A, a sweet, sweet girl. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dr. JJ, as I mentioned earlier, um, Healthy Spot followers submitted their questions about their pet's health and safety during the summer. So we've got a couple of questions for you about how to keep your pets nice and cool and safe. The first question is about hydration. So many of those at home ask, how much water should my dog drink and how do I know if they're dehydrated? So that's a really good question. As you know, it's 
extremely hot in a lot of places right now, particularly here. Sorry, JJ, I don't know if you're coming through any audio. Uh, I don't think I'm hearing. <laughs> I can hear you from over there. I can't hear you uh, through the iPad. Oh, here we okay. Go. Now you're else that's on can tell me. I'll just keep going with the question to see if you can hear. Uh, we can hear you now, JJ. We're okay. Good. Oh, Maybe just a little, a little uh, Wi-Fi issue there. Um, so we were asking the question about maintaining your pet's hydration. So I think it's really, really important that there's water available at all times. Um, so, you know, I know that sounds really intuitive, but they may drink it and empty your, their water bowl more uh, quickly than they normally would. So just making sure that maybe they have a bigger bowl than normal. You can also, in some places that it's really hot, you can actually uh, leave out a regular water bowl and maybe one that's solidly frozen, which will slowly melt throughout the day. And that's also kind of a fun enrichment thing for them to lick a giant ice cube. Right, because we like to do some frozen enrichment for our pets where we'll freeze like, you know, yogurt or pumpkin or stuff like that to give them something to do. Yeah, anything cold, it would be wonderful at this, at this time. Give them lots of popsicles, lots of cold, cold, uh, cold water to give them. Awesome. Well, another concern, um, again, with the theme of staying cool, that a lot of parents, uh, pet parents have is protecting their dogs paws from the hot asphalt and sidewalk during the summer because especially I don't know about you guys but I can barely like get to the mail without putting on sandals these days so what are some tips for making sure that dogs paws aren't getting burned when they're out walking absolutely so there's a couple things that come to mind one is I really just wouldn't be walking your dog at the hottest times of the day between 11 and 2 o'clock you know, it's just too hot for them. They don't have the same ability to thermoregulate. So they don't have the same ability to lose heat through sweating. You know, they can only lose heat basically through panting. And sometimes that's not enough for some of the breeds. So number one, I would only walk them in the morning and the evening. Secondly, if you take your hand and you put the back of your hand or even your palm, just put it down on the asphalt yourself. If you can't leave it there for an extended period of time, but more than five seconds, because it's too warm for your hand, it's too hot for their paws too. So I've definitely, Claudia and I have used to work oh, together yeah. in a vet hospital and we have bandaged many, many paws from yeah. uh, people oh. that, took, uh, that took their dogs on extended walks when they didn't think it was that hot, but just, you know, it, it's surprising how, um, how hot that asphalt can get, especially if you're walking for more than a few minutes. Yeah, that's definitely something you want to keep in mind, especially if you guys are going to go out and start hiking. It's something to where you want to just make sure that you keep it as a positive experience. Oh, good one. And nice one. Check. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> you want to keep it positive for them. And it's nice to just do a little paw check. To, if it, if, imagine if you were walking barefoot. If it's too hot for you, then it's definitely too hot for these guys. So it, it's just imagine like what it would be like for them. So you always want to try to keep it a positive experience for them to where they want to keep going on walks with you. So it sounds like a lot of these are about anticipating your pet's needs and planning ahead, essentially. Yeah, and just thinking that they're not invincible, you know, just because they have tough pot pads, they're actually just a thickened layer of skin. Um, and so it's not, they can get worn down pretty easily. I don't know yeah. if you've ever experienced swimming in a pool where the pool is really rough at the bottom. You know, they're, um, you know, they, they too can wear their pot pads down easier than people think. So just don't take them out in the hottest times of the day and you'll pretty much be safe. You know what also is kind of a nice thing to do is you want to make sure that these guys also have water. You know, there's like all these really cool containers that you can take with your pet out and about to walk. And the thing is, is the better prepared you are and the more often you do it, the easier it is every time. And that's the goal. You guys want to go exactly take your pet pretty much everywhere. And if you guys notice nowadays, your pets really are allowed almost even in the market. Almost. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I was going to say, I, either Rose had a huge growth spurt or that is a new adoptable. What's her name? It's a magic trick, movie magic. And now we have <laughs> Guinevere. Guinevere. Yes. Like one of our to, champions here. I just have to tell you, I wish that all of you could feel her. Her fur is so soft. She's just this giant, soft teddy bear. Totally. 
Francie's amazing with some hair, like that. Like, so she is six, approximately. Um, she is absolutely a sweetheart, and she's focused on us because we have treats, and the camera does not have treats, but she loves people. She's just constantly kissing us. She is very, very sweet. She's looking at her spay incision. She just got spayed, so we're really happy about that, because she is ready to go home. She loves, loves, loves people. Um, and she loves to know about her. She, not only does she love people, but she's almost human size. She's pretty tall. She's a very big cuddle bug. And she would also be a great candidate to go on long walks with and to actually even go hiking. But and not too hot. Yeah, you want to do hot Of you course. Want to, wherever you go, you want to make sure that it's a happy, safe environment for your pet. You've got to show your face to the audience, my love. You've got to show your face to the audience. Let's see. Let's see this. Like, so the audience doesn't have trees. I know, but there we go. We got to just, I just want to show. I do. How oh, oh, oh. Oh, sweet. There we go. Well, so, um, her history, she is just a rescue. A rescue, and I wish I could show you a little bit better about her beautiful little fluffy thank you. Well, speaking of her fluffy coat, um, so one of the other questions that people had was, you know, Guinevere has a very beautiful, fluffy coat. Um, and a lot of people think that during the summer, it's a good idea to give our pets shorter haircuts. Does that actually help them stay cool? You know what? That is absolutely not the case. I know it's very intuitive. You think, oh, shorter fur, they are going to be able to cool off. But it's not actually the case. It's the opposite. You don't want to shave them during the summer because it's actually a way to- It looks like we have some more uh, audio difficulties, JJ. Sorry about that. That's OK. Sometimes, you know, it's just a lot of devices, I guess. Can you hear me now? Testing, 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 testing. Yeah, not yet. We're no. totally doing like a Mythbusters situation. A little bit. You would think that because you shave your dog down, that's going to cool them down, but that's actually not really the case. Yeah. So may, I'm, hopefully people at home can still hear us. If you can still hear us, everybody in the comments, throw us a throw thumbs, me. Yeah, thumbs up. I can hear you now, JJ. Okay, great. Yay. Thanks, John. Thanks for your patience. Of course. Um, everyone just has to be very tech patient, I call it these days. When we're tech, totally, tech totally. Patient. Now that we're in this uh, different time to where everything is kind of online and via Zoom. Yeah. So, Guinevere yeah. here, beautiful six year old dog, loves people. He's just hairs. like constantly kissing, right, baby girl? This amazing eyeliner. So, we don't want to shave our dogs during the summer, the ones with long fur. You can keep their coats kind of thinner, shorter, but you do yeah. not want to shave them. No. Um, it actually makes them. It's more hot. I know it's really strange because they can be more prone to sunburns. The sun can get to their skin more easily. Oh, that yeah. way. And actually, this actually acts as a barrier for the sunshine to get in, getting down to their skin. Their oh, fur nice. absorbs the heat rather than their skin. Yeah. Right. And dogs can have very sensitive skin where even, you know, if you use a blow dryer that's too hot when you're giving them a bath, it might irritate it, right? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. They can get sunburned as well. You know, they have this fur and the fur blocks the sun from most of their bodies, but a lot of dogs that are have um, white fur and pink skin, especially if they're laying outside and their their belly or their nose is pink, you want to put sunscreen on them. Yeah. So are there like brands of dog sunscreen? Can you use people sunscreen for your dogs? Yeah, you just want to avoid the the zinc based ones, um, but you can use you can use some people sunscreen, but there are some the, some doggy ones. You just want to make sure that they don't lick it. So you want to you know some dogs will lick it right off, and you don't really want to do it then. Um, but if a dog's going to leave it alone, you may want to put it on, take them out for a little walk or something, and let it absorb in, and then it shouldn't be a problem. And go from there. Yep. Yeah. And if your dog just really needs it and is only going to lick it off, then don't leave them out in the hottest time of the day. Good to know. Yeah, um, so share your air conditioning. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. Uh, so another question, um, a lot of pet parents love spending time with their dog out and about during the summer. You know, usually the weather is beautiful. If it's not punishingly hot, like it has been lately. Um, they love taking their dogs for activities or quick errands throughout the day. What are some tips for keeping your pet safe while you're out with them enjoying the sunshine and running errands? Yeah, so that's a really good question. I mean, I always kind of advise people that to really think about whether your dog needs to go with you somewhere and whether it's something that you're doing because you want them with you or because it's actually good for the pet. You know, a lot of people will take their dog everywhere and when it's cooler, that's not really that big of a deal if they enjoy it and they don't stress out. But when it's hot like this, um, at least here, I know there's probably people who are logging in from places that 
might not be as hot, but here, certain parts of LA are 110 degrees right now. Totally. Yeah. Not. I would not take them everywhere. They are safer at home. They are safer in the cooler part of your home, out of the sunshine and out of the heat. Um, and then I hope that everybody knows this, but we're going to say it anyway. Just in do case. Not, do not leave your animal in a car, even for two minutes to run nice. inside. Um, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Uh, it is so, heat stroke is horrible. It's so common. It unfortunately is common because pe it can rise to 110, 120, 130 degrees in your car within 10 minutes. Um, 10 minutes? Yes. No way. I, wow. Yes. So just don't yeah, do so it. Don't leave your, so if you're going to run errands, just leave them at home and when it's hot. You know, if you're yeah, going to go anything. somewhere where they're, they're going to be in a cool place. Um, and yeah. They're welcome to come, totally. Okay, guys, oh. let's say goodbye to Guinevere, and we're going to chat a little bit more. She needs a home. She's beautiful. I'd like to have her at my house. Yeah, so, I yeah. You really don't want to, um, you don't want to have animals left in cars. It's, it's really, really, really dangerous. It's really terrible for them when it's this hot. Um, yeah. What other questions have you got, John? Well, actually, uh, that's about it, JJ. Thanks for the awesome okay. advice. We really appreciate it. So we'll check back in with you in a bit for more pet health tips. But for those of us uh, watching from the Annenberg Pet Space account, please be sure to head over to the Healthy Spot Instagram live feed to continue joining in on the fun. And be sure to stay tuned as we have a lot more summer tips and adorable adoptables for you to meet, like a new kitten, Jolie. Hello. I'm actually gonna hand him off to you for a second. Ooh. Uh, this is Martin. Martin is about two months old and he's very squirmy. Um, so maybe we get a little bit of squeeze too with him. He's a very new baby, as you can see. Oh, I can hear that burn, though. Yeah, I'm he's very burn. excited to be out here. <laughs> Hi, little man. Um, we are still kind of um, letting him get kind of exposed to people, new sounds uh, outside of his little suite that he has here. Um, he so, is chomping. Yep, oh. he's, he's pretty hungry. Um, he's trying to get my, my cocktail earlier. Oh! Um, and I, what do you have there? Um, so, I, I wish I was thinking at work, but I am not because I'm a great employee. Um, <laughs> you sure are. So, <laughs> this is actually a cocktail that we have created by one of our Healthy Spot friends, Sierra. Um, and she is going to show us how to do a little dog mocktail, as you call it. <laughs> Um, Martin actually tried to get a little bit of this. I, I don't know if it's okay for cats or not, but um, let's head over and say hi to Sierra. <laughs> I, I hope it's like, you know, there's tuna in there, right? <laughs> <laughs> tuna. Like... He's, he's I, the term hungry puppy, more like hungry kitten. Hi, Sierra. Hi, Sierra. Hi, Sierra. Guys, I'm so happy everyone's tuning in today. As you guys said, we're here from Healthy Spot, and there's nothing we love more than treating our pets. So I thought what I'd share with you guys today is a really fun way to treat your pet. Uh, if you can see here, we have very fancy, very fancy. Yeah, what is it? Yes. Oh, yes. You, cheers. Cheers. Uh, this is a really fun way to treat your pet that's healthy and cooling, right? Because we just talked about how important hydration is. And foam broth is one of my favorite ways to hydrate your pup and keep them cool. So right here, we have our grass-fed uh, feed foam broth that we're using today. So you're just going to want to use one ounce of this. This one's frozen, so be sure to bring it home, thaw it out. Um, you're just going to pour one to two ounces, depending on the size of your dog. And we have this fancy garnish here. I don't, I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, but some freeze-dried chicken on top. You can do it with or without, but it makes it a little extra fancy and Instagrammable. Yeah. And again, guys, it's just two simple ingredients, and you can change it up any way you want. So you can use our chicken bone broth. We have a variety of freezer and treats, everything from beef liver, so yum, lamb liver, duck jerky, and freeze dried chicken. Um, but I think Gypsy is eagerly awaiting. It's 5 o'clock somewhere, and 5 o'clock for Gypsy oh, yeah. right here. Uh, I just spilled a little bit of the cocktail, but thankfully I have Martin here to help me out with it. Um, <laughs> yeah, named after Dean, I'm sure. He's never known to turn down a cocktail. Oh. Hi, Katie. Hi, Gypsy. <laughs> How does she like it? I think she loves it. <laughs> oh, my God. Awesome. Well, Martin does too, so it's also cat approved. <laughs> Hi. So, um, Gypsy, as you can see, is obviously a big fan of eating and drinking. <laughs> can you tell us a little bit more, Katie? 
So Dipsy is a three and a half year old bulldog mix. He loves attention and she loves people. Uh, she wants all the attention to herself though, so she would be best in as the only dog in the home. But she is just a sweetheart. She loves treats, she loves play, and she loves love. So uh, for those of you watching at home, this is Katie. She is our in-house trainer. She is amazing. Um, her personal dogs have won a ton of events and medals and I'm sure tons of fun awards. Um, so um, we are very happy to have her today. Thank you for taking time out of your very busy schedule, Katie. We love it and I'm sure Gypsy loves it too. Um, so how, what do you think Gypsy said about the, the cocktail? What does she think? Final thoughts? I think he sucked that down pretty fast. <laughs> awesome, awesome. <laughs> so, um, it looks like um, we've received some audience questions about training. Um, so, first off, what do you recommend for separation anxiety between the pet and the pet parent? So, separation anxiety can be um, a real struggle. And right now, a lot of our vets are getting used to having their people at home all the time. So it can be really difficult as we transition into being outside of the house more. So leaving your dog with really exciting and good treats, kind of like we're doing here, but ones that are more durable for when you're gone, like stuff calm, mm -hmm. are really helpful, or other interactive treat toys. I like to try this before I'm going to be gone for an entire day. I will actually uh, leave my dog in a room with a two separate from me so that they're getting used to it and they're not just all of a sudden thrown into being alone when I go back to work. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah, so for those of you who are working from home right now, your animal might be getting kind of used to that. Um, but those are some great tips for when you do have to go back to work or maybe leave your house. Um, so next up. Another question a lot of people ask is how can we socialize our dogs while still observing social distancing rules? Sure. So socialization is not necessarily my dog going up and greeting every person or every dog that they meet. Mm -hmm. Socialization is about my dog learning how to be okay around all of those things. Right. That actually is kind of perfect because as we go out for our walks with our dog, our young dogs especially, they learn to focus on us and that they're not going to necessarily go up to every person or dog that they see. What we want to do is reward them as we walk by other dogs or people. Definitely bikers and joggers especially because that's really exciting, right? And we reward them for focusing on us instead. At the end of all this, we're going to have dogs who actually are really, really good about letting the world go by and not getting over, overly stimulated by the whole. Right. Well, thank you so much, Katie. That is some awesome information that I would not have thought of. No, um, I am not a dog owner, um, so thank you so much for that um, insight. I'm sure that'll be really helpful to a lot of people at home. Um, so thank you, Katie, and thank you so much, uh, Sierra, for teaching us how to make the drink, and of course, Gypsy for for being our our taste tester. Um, <laughs> you guys, and thanks, Martin, as well. And thanks, Martin. Um, so we know you guys probably love seeing Groucho and Charlie and Martin. However, we actually have a full room full of kittens here, if you guys would like to see that. So we're actually going to switch on over to the scratching post now. Um, that is Martin, Groucho, and Charlie's uh, room where they live. Um, it's a totally interactive cat space. And we're going to take a quick look with our um, animal care specialist, Courtney Stone. And she's going to tell us a little bit more about that. So we're just waiting for her to join uh, for a second. Yeah. Martin is having a great time out here. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, he's having the time of his life. I don't think he's missing the scratching post. No. Um, Martin so. does like to climb. There's plenty of vertical space in the scratching post for yeah. our kittens to explore their world yep. as much as possible. Oh, he's knocking everything down. Um, yeah, you know what? I mean, so honestly, is... <laughs> can we get wardrobe? I'm like covered in tuna. Oh my gosh. Uh, um, you're a messy eater. <laughs> Very messy. Uh, Martin is adoptable. We are doing adoptions by appointment currently. So if you're interested in Martin or any of our other kittens or dogs you've seen today, um, you can head on over to our website and get some more information. So it looks like we are connected. And there hey. she is. Hi, Hi everybody. <laughs> Hi. I'm just here with Mr. Presley. Hi, Presley. <laughs> Oh, Groucho Marx, he wanted to make his appearance again. <laughs> he missed you guys, so he wanted to say hi from the scratching post. 
Awesome. So can you tell us a little bit about the scratching post, what it's used for, what are the benefits of it? Yeah, so our scratching post is a community cat room. So right now we have about seven kittens running around. Um, and I don't know if you can see behind me, but this is a giant tree that the kittens can climb. So they get to get a lot of enrichment and, and their energy out by climbing and scratching. Because all of this is made from scratching material. Um, so they get to scratch their claws. Um, and they get to play and interact with lots of other kittens. As you can see, they're running around behind me playing with toys. That's awesome. So um, you, you could say this room is, is also a socialization room, right? So yes. we use it to kind of get the kittens used to people, used to other cats before they go home. Yes, exactly. So, you know, any kitten that's adopted from this room, you know that they get along with other cats. Um, with the proper introduction. So if you already have another cat at home and you're looking for a little kitten friend, you know, Groucho Marx here is looking for a home, so. That is awesome. So speaking of that, actually, do you think you could tell us a little bit more about the adoption process? Yes. So obviously COVID kind of is an unprecedented time for all of us. So we had to do a little updating to our adoption policies. Um, while we are closed to the public, um, we are doing adoptions by appointment. Um, so if anyone's interested in adopting, they can go to annabirdpetspace.org slash adopt. Um, look through our pictures of all of our amazing adoptable animals and either click their photo for more info or go to our adoption process page and schedule a phone call with one of our adoption specialists where we are happy to talk to you about any animal that you're interested in. Um, and if that phone call goes well and you think you want to adopt either Groucho or any of his friends, um, we can set up either a virtual meet and greet um, for all of our kitty friends, or we can even set up a in-person meet and greet outside in one of our play yards uh, following all of the COVID uh, you know, requirements that everyone stays physically distanced, wear face coverings, all of that. So you can still find your new best friend. That is awesome. So uh, knowing Martin and Groucho, these are amazing animals. They've got to be like really expensive, right? They aren't actually. All of our animals, their adoption fee is eighty dollars, and that $80? includes dollars. What? And that includes them being spayed, neutered, microchipped, and up to date on age appropriate vaccines. So, so you get a full package. You do. You can't go wrong with that. <laughs> and so all that is done before we even put them on the website, right? Yes. Yep, so all of these ones, they are ready to go. Ms. Parmesan here, she's been waiting for her home for a little while, so she is looking for a new home to go to. Awesome, awesome. Apologies, guys, Martin got a little uh, too tuna crazy. <laughs> That's right, I have treats in my pocket too, so they're all really interested in me. Hey buddy, okay, so this is what happened the last time. You maybe not want to overextend yourself? <laughs> He's not going to want to come back here after being he with you, John. <laughs> well, thank you so, so much, Courtney, for that amazing information. And again, for those of you watching at home, go ahead and check out our website if you guys are interested in any of our adoptable kittens or dogs or uh, adult cats you've seen. Yes. Um, but thank you so much, Courtney. Thank you, guys. Bye. Uh -huh. So um, now we are going to be heading back over to Dr. JJ and Claudia. A lot of followers asked about how to keep summer pests at bay for their fur babies. Oh. Talking about things like fleas, talking about things like ticks. So we're going to check back with them over on Fetch Deck. Hi there. Hi. Martin While Martin is continues his time. tuna spree. <laughs> and we're also going to learn a little bit about maybe if you're out hiking and your pet gets a snake bite, what you're supposed to do in that situation. Oh gosh, that's kind of Hi. scary. No. <laughs> and of course, bee stings. A lot of pets are just like people, Ooh. and they're allergic to bees just like people. Yikes. I'd be, I would be very nervous if one of my cats got a bee sting, so I'm really looking forward to what we have to say here. He is just, he has eaten this entire, <laughs> this kitten weighs like two pounds tops. And he's only like two months old. Yeah, right? he ate this entire tuna tube. Well, so just this is <laughs> tuna tube number two. Tuna tube number one is <laughs> So but he finished it. Fair warning, Martin loves food. Um, so if you're interested in getting this little kitty, I don't think he's going to be little for very much longer. Um, but it seems like you can buy his love very easily. So. <laughs> Hi, little man. Yes, he, <laughs> he is about two 
two months old. So he is freshly available for adoption. Um, typically kittens uh, need to be about two pounds to be spayed or neutered. And we do make sure that that happens before they leave the space. So yep. Martin is, is fresh out of surgery. Hi guys. Hi guys. Hi. Hi. Hey. Who do we have here? The best thing I've done in months. <laughs> much fun talk about an adoption spotlight we're so excited to partner with healthy spot on this fun event today yes so look at this adorable dog we have but first i'm gonna john if you, if you guys have questions let's like, do that first and then i'm gonna let claudia talk about this adorable dog <laughs> sure yes why no why no <laughs> Yeah, she is. She's only six months and six days old, so she's a baby. So if you guys really think about it, she's only been on the planet for six months, and she brought this cuteness with her. <laughs> yeah, wow. her so, right there. So how big do you think she's going to grow? You know, it's kind of hard to say. She's got kind of some small paws. She's, I, hopefully, she'll still be um, apartment size. But I think the amount of love that she can give, that part's going to be huge. Yeah, I'm guesstimating she'll still be carryable. That's my goal. What are you talking about? Maybe. <laughs> carryable for who? I love you, Claudia, <laughs> and your perpetual optimism. I think she's going to be 75 pounds, honestly. Ooh, she's all right. Pounds. No, she's probably going to be a great high king. So we'll, we'll split the difference. We'll Maybe. split the difference. She's right now, she's already about 40 pounds. She's got another 20 pounds to go. But wow. So she is so small. Six, six months? Six months? Six months? There's that stripe. Right. This cute stripe on her nose. Ah. She's so soft and cuddly. Ah. So, but you know, one thing that's really, really important is you don't want to get an animal based on looks. You want to get an animal based on their personality, based on what you're able to handle. You know, she is so cute, but she needs a lot of training, right? Dogs that are puppies need a lot of. They just need some work to learn boundaries and manners and yeah. how to do good. It's, it's a full-time project, getting it's a puppy. It's a full-time project, you know, they, uh, and then you end up with years and years of a fabulous pet and a great companion. So, you yeah. know, you just want to make sure you don't jump into a puppy, you know, without thinking it through first, because a lot of dogs are, they really need you to teach them. They need to learn just like kids, what is appropriate behavior, how to be a good dog, how to treat people with respect, how to be, how to have impulse control so they're not jumping all over everybody they meet. Um, totally, you know? Yeah, definitely. It's always, it's always going to be a training opportunity. Any interaction is a training interaction. You want to make sure that you always keep it positive. With Winona, we're working on sits and eye contact. So I'll try to have her like walk a little and then have her sit. See? And that's a quick lure. And so, Claudia, I noticed that you didn't say sit when you... No, yeah, just because... We try to use um, hand signals and keep it positive to where we don't know what the language is going to be in the home that she's going to end up in. They could be Spanish speakers, English speakers, or not speakers at all. I don't know. It depends. She's gonna, it, it, so we want to make sure that we set her up for success. And she always has an opening to just stay, stay in home. That's awesome. So we do have a couple of questions, mm -hmm. um, like we were saying, related to how to keep summer pests at bay with your pets. Um, so. What is some advice for preventing fleas and ticks Ooh, great from attacking your dog? Or cat? Oh, that is a good question. It's something that we face here a lot in LA and all over the country. Ooh. So fleas and ticks, they're um, really an annoyance, uh, but they also can transmit disease. So we have to be really you know, aware of making sure that they don't um, develop a problem with fleas and ticks. Luckily, veterinarians have some great, great, great preventatives that work much better than they used to even 10, 15 years ago. So, you know, awesome. monthly you want to apply a preventative either on their skin or something oral. So hopefully you have a relationship with your vet and your vet will recommend what they're comfortable with because there are a lot of different products and they all work really, really well. Um, you know, the key is the things with the thing with fleas that people don't quite understand is that, you know, fleas, the most of the medicines that we have that work are not repellents. So you know when you go into the forest and you put off on your skin or some kind of repellent, we don't really have great repellents for fleas. So the fleas still jump on, they take a bite, they get a medicine that's in your bloodstream and then they're, they die and they're not able to replicate. Um, so you still want to try not to bring your animal to an area that's infested with fleas because then they're going to perpetually be getting them. Yes, the medicine will keep them from getting an infestation, but they will... Um, uh, the, the important thing is you want to just make sure they're not going to a spot where there is just a lot of fleas. Wildlife have tons of fleas, you know, so not taking them to an area where there's a ton of, of wildlife around. Um, yeah. yeah. Again, 
preventative stuff, anticipating your pet's needs, kind of like what we were talking about before. Yeah, and then, you know, unfortunately, fleas and ticks is not a summer thing. I mean, in some parts of the country, fleas and ticks die off in the cold winter, but not here, um, not in the southern states. Fleas and ticks live all year round. So it's not just a summer thing, it is all year. Have a great relationship with a veterinarian who can recommend a product that is, suits your dog because some of them have combinations. Some of them are also heartworm preventative. Some of them are flea, tick, heartworm. So you want to pick something that makes sense for your dog and your lifestyle. Gotcha. That's, yeah, thank you, JJ. That's some great information. Um, so kind of going off of that, um, now we're moving on to bees. What would you do if your animal got a bee sting? Like that must be a really stressful scenario. Yeah, no, that's a great question. And that happens a lot, right? So. If your animal, so your animal could get stung by a bee and nothing might happen, just like, you know, us. It might hurt, it might be annoying, but then some are allergic to these things, right? Just like us, and some of them can have a, a reaction. So, you know, if your animal gets stung by a bee and you, they've never been stung before and you don't know what's going to happen, I would recommend just rushing them to the vet. Not driving like a maniac, but rushing, rushing them to the vet. Um, and that's to prevent any worsening reaction from happening. You want to see if you can find the stinger. Sometimes, depending on where they got stung, you may see a tiny little stinger that you can pull out. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but taking them to the vet is really important just because a small percentage of dogs have what's called an anaphylactic reaction. People have heard that before, where they can have a reaction where it could become very dangerous. Um, if you see your aunt, your dog, or a cat even, who got stung by a bee, if they're vomiting, having diarrhea, trouble breathing, anything like that, especially right after they got stung, you've got to get them to the vet right away so we can stop that. Um, reaction from happening. It's a, okay, it's so it's kind of a, a better safe than sorry reaction. Something yeah. might not happen, but just in case you want to take those. I, I would, just especially unless you know what's going to happen with your particular animal. Be right. safe, you know, just, just get them checked out. They can check your, your heart rate, their temperature, make sure they're not having a reaction on the inside, but you can't tell on the outside. So I would take them to your vet. It's always a really good idea to have a great relationship with your local vet and then an emergency hospital, you know, know where that is. So you can take them in in a moment's notice without having to get on Google and try to figure out where the closest emergency is. Right. <laughs> Always listen to your veterinarian over, over Dr. Google. Yes, Dr. Google. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, nine times out of ten. Um, do you have any other yeah. questions? So speaking of emergencies and hospitals, let's talk about a worst case scenario. What happens if your pet gets a snake bite? What do people do? Absolutely. So that happens a lot too, unfortunately. So let's back up a little bit. So, you know, really important. A lot of people want to take their dogs hiking. I get it. I, I have a big dog too. She'd love to run hiking. Claudia has Hudson, gorgeous big dog who wants to go hiking. I want to go. So a couple things that are really important. Snakes, you know, they're cold blooded. They, they need to go out into the, they live in cold areas and they want to come out into the sun to warm up, right? So Depending on the time of day, you might find a snake that is coming out of their den to warm up to raise their body temperature. So having a dog off leash is absolutely a big no-no in my opinion uh, on a hiking trail. They are going to find a snake and they're going to be so curious about it and they're not going to leave it alone. Um, and having a dog get bit on the nose by a rattlesnake is terrible. Um, you want to, if it does happen, uh, you want to rush them to the nearest emergency vet right away absolutely like pronto 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 um luckily we the medicine the anti-venom the treatments that we have now are really really great if we get it started you know very quickly but it's something that is so is relatively easy to prevent keeping your dog on the leash and maybe not taking them yeah. hiking in in parts of la or places where there are a lot of rattlesnakes i mean i know it's great but the the risk of being bit by a rattlesnake is pretty high you know people see them all over the place here so there's other safer places to take your dogs, like especially on trails um, or public parks where there's usually a lot of people, so they probably already scared away the rattlesnakes. Oh, wow. Um, there is rattlesnake aversion training that you can also do so that if they do happen to find a snake, that they might avoid it. Um, not always that effective, though, when a real rattlesnake is in front of them because dogs are curious. You know, they want to catch a, they want to catch a live animal and play with it. Yeah. You know? wow. Okay, so awesome. So uh, just best thing so there is also a rattlesnake vaccine yeah. um, and you know the thing it's important to get if your dog is living in the mountains and whatnot but it's not the same as a lot of other the core vaccines that are really really going to prevent mm -hmm. uh, a disease from occurring it will it may and it doesn't always it may make the symptoms of a rattlesnake bite less 
Um, so it's a good idea to get, or at least just talk to your veterinarian about and see whether your dog is um, a candidate for the vaccine. But it definitely doesn't prevent the symptoms. So you cannot have uh, your dog vaccinated for a rattlesnake um, and then not take it to the hospital if it's bad. Gotcha. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for those amazing, uh, like, hiking trail and outdoor tips. Um, I have a question. Um, I know a lot of people are probably not traveling a lot right now. Um, however, if they did need to travel with their pet, because um, sometimes you do need to go to animal places, or maybe you're moving or something like that, uh, do you have any recommendations to kind of help alleviate a little bit of that anxiety that the pet might have? Absolutely. So that's a great question. So... If you are moving with your pet or traveling with your pet, you know, the ideal time to get them used to that sort of thing is a little bit before you're gonna leave, right? So it's all right. about positive reinforcement training, just like what Katie, you know, goes over. Mm -hmm. um, you wanna get them used to whatever crate, the car, you know, whatever it is they're going to be in um, and the experiences they're gonna have ahead of time and have that be positive, right? So, you know, if it's a situation where you can't do a lot of training ahead of time and getting them used to it, then I would absolutely discuss it with your veterinarian because there are a lot of, um, there's a lot of medications that can help reduce the anxiety. So if I had to, out of the blue, take my dog on an airplane, you know, some vets will do it, some vets won't. It just depends on the dog and depends on the age and whether they're healthy, but some animals can get a sedative to help take the anxiety edge off. Um, so, but really getting them used to the crate is the most important thing. So having a crate, whatever crate they're gonna use um, when they're in the car or when they're in the airplane, having that in your home, feeding them in it, putting treats in it, putting their toys in it, making that be their happy place so they feel safe in it when they travel. Everything awesome should happen in that crate. And yeah. it should be a great opportunity and that pet should feel comfortable in there. And then a quick tip too, you wanna make sure that your pet can turn around in that enclosure, that mm -hmm. they, can, they still have a little bit of access to some water too. Yep, absolutely. That's good to know. And it, it would be the same for cats and dogs? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cats and dogs. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thanks, Dr. JJ. Thanks, Claudia. Yeah. Thanks, I need Claudia. a home. Claudia. <laughs> what a beautiful girl. There. I know. She's like, I'll go. Claudia's only bringing me super soft dogs today. Ah. I can't stop. They're just these fluffer nuggets. <laughs> so cute. Yes. They're, like, they're all like microfiber blankets. <laughs> Well, um, you get a puppy, you're going to get a puppy, get a trainer. Yeah. Really, yeah. <laughs> Teach your dog how to be a good dog. Totally. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you for all of that amazing information, guys. And thank you so much, Winona. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. We have a lot of great animals up for adoption here. Mm -hmm. Wallace Annenberg Pet Space. We're so, so excited to show you these yes. animals and partner with Healthy Spot on their uh, Instagram account. They have so many great customers that love, love, love animals just like us. Yeah. We're going to find great homes for them. Let's keep doing it. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. awesome. <laughs> That's tail. Bye. Is tail working pretty good? Just slapping me in the face. <laughs> Thanks, JJ. Thanks, Claudia. So speaking of our trainer, I think we mentioned her a couple of times, yeah. Katie, who is our in-house trainer at Pet Space. We are going to go uh, outdoors for a little bit of summer fun, because uh, nothing says summer like enjoying some exactly. time in the yard. And I don't know about you, John, I'm feeling a little constricted in my apartment during this quarantine. So anytime I get to go outside and kind of have a nice time with my animals, it's very valuable to me. Absolutely. Um, so we are actually going to connect with our in-space uh, or in-house trainer, Katie McGuire, Yay. from Pet Space, who's going to share with you guys some ways that you can cool off and entertain your pet from the comfort of your own yard. So we're actually going to be going to our yard area. Yes. Uh, it's called Barks and Rec. Pun intended. We are absolutely <laughs> lousy with pet puns at Pet Space. Yep. <laughs> Any opportunity to take a pet pun, we take it. So we have patio, yep. our, one of our cat areas behind the scenes. Of course, we are on Pounce patio mm -hmm. right now. Fetch deck is Fetch where you guys deck. saw JJ and Claudia. So literally every piece of the space is kind of named after some form of the animal human body. Oh my gosh, so hi, Katie. I think that's our dog, Jersey, maybe? No, this is Leia. Leia, oh, oh. Hi, hi, princess. Um, <laughs> the worshipfulness. <laughs> Um, Miss, Miss Organa, um, so, um, is this not the funnest thing ever? That I would love to be out there right now. I am so jealous of you, Katie. Um, so could you tell us a little bit about what you're doing out there? So 
we are having fun in the heat with a little doggy pool. We've got water in here, and we've got some toys in here for her to play with. She's kind of just getting used to it, but so far she really likes it. She's been drinking the water. There you go, checking it out. Hey, move your butt so everybody can see you. Come in. <laughs> She's having a little too much fun. She's a little distracted. Oh, yeah. Like, you know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> She's loving awesome. this. This is our first time in the pool. Oh, oh awesome. So that actually brings up a great question. Um, how would you get your dog used to swimming if you wanted to have, like, a little playtime with them outside? Sure. Take it slow. Lots mm -hmm. of treats. Make it a positive experience. This is easy because it's only her feet getting wet. If you want them to learn how to swim, you got to take it slow. Dogs are not going to want to jump right in without being able to feel the bottom of whatever right. it is. So let them figure it out. Use lots of cookies. Sometimes if you've got a pool and you want them to swim with you, if you get in and swim first and encourage them, that can be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> but and this is also only a great way. Water. <laughs> yes. This but is yeah. a great way to help cool them down and have a lot of fun. So um, you said cookies, and we're not just like giving Leia chips of water. <laughs> Sorry, yes. Let me clarify. When I say cookies, I mean dog treats. <laughs> so what type of dog treats are you using with Leia now? So we're using a, it's actually a roll food that we cut up into little pieces. And then I have a variety of different treats. I even have some hot dogs. Oh, really exciting. She's spoiled. <laughs> but I use all different kinds of treats to make it a very happy experience for my dog. Oh, that's and so, awesome. Is there like a hierarchy of treats? Like, is hot, are hot dogs better than, you know, rolled treats or I mean, what's I, that like? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I use hot dogs <laughs> as the best treats. And then under that, we've got other things. Um, it just kind of depends on what my dog likes. I like to use whatever treats they are excited about. But a lot of times in the house, or if I'm doing something really, really simple, I'll just use their food as a treat. That is awesome. Well, I will say she just looks absolutely miserable to be outside right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> So as you can see, once your, your dog gets used to this, it seems like she's having an awesome time. She's really happy. It seems to be spending time with Katie. Um, I'm sure your, your dogs at home will love to just have this experience with their pet parents. Oh, she's like, I'm done. I'm going to go mess with this flamingo now. <laughs> <laughs> and so does she have toys in her bowl there, Katie? Oh, oh. oh and it looks like we've also got... Uh, is that Chewy? It is Chewy. He's a Hi, oh Chewy. We've, we've got the whole crew of the Millennium Falcon outside, it looks we do. like. We're just missing Han. Han's taking yeah. a <laughs> But I'm here, Chewy. As you can see, he wants to be a lap dog. <laughs> oh, my He's goodness. He's 70 pounds. Wait, real quick. How much does he weigh, Courtney? He's about 70 pounds, and he is 10 months old, so he still has some growing to do. Wow. <laughs> but yeah. a lap dog, yeah. but he is so sweet. And we're out here with some frozen enrichment. As you can see, we've got an, a bone, a bully stick. We even have some fun carrots. Come here. Down at the bottom here, there's some carrots frozen down there. But I, <laughs> he would rather me pet him than eat his tasty snack at the moment. So that actually brings up a great point. Uh, what do you do when your dog maybe doesn't want treats when you're training with them? Is there something else you can use as like an, an incentive to make them feel comfortable? Yeah, I was going to ask that. As you can see, Katie's working with oh. Chewy right now to get him to see if he wants to eat the, the frozen uh, enrichment. So she's using some other treats, some of her tasty hot dogs that she has while he's licking it and rewarding him for it. So. <laughs> With something like this, they don't really understand that this is an edible thing. It's just an ice cube. So you have to get them licking it so that they know it tastes good. Gotcha. Right. So you gotta gotta get them started on it in order for them to realize, oh, this is for me and this is delicious. Right. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. So can can viewers actually make that enrichment at home? Maybe is there something they could maybe use in their own cupboards that they can make for their dogs to kind of get that mental stimulation? Absolutely. And this is actually bone broth, just like we were using with from Healthy Spot. 
and then a little bit of pumpkin and oh. some water in there. And then I stuck a bully stick and a Nyla bone in just for some added fun that he could check out. He really wants to play with Leia. That's why he's not very interested in this. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. We had him for a pet encounter earlier this week. Yep. He was just an absolute love bug. <laughs> and oh, would you say, does he get along well with other dogs? Oh, yeah. He loves other dogs. Okay, so for those of you watching at home, if you're looking for a, a tank of a dog who's just absolutely sweet and then yeah. is great at coexisting, there's there's an option there. <laughs> if you want a Wookiee, if you want, a, if you want a, a Wookie. an absolute, like, thick unit of a dog. If you'd like a co-pilot. Um, yes. <laughs> Sorry for those of you watching who are not into Star Wars. We are having a moment at Pet Space. <laughs> we, you know, we've got Han, we've got Leia, we've got Rose we saw. We've we got, got Ahsoka. Ahsoka, yeah. if you're into Clone Wars. <laughs> um, so what, uh, how long do you think, it, like, how long do you think it'll take Han, um, Chewie to work through that frozen enrichment? Like, how long is that going to keep him occupied? And <laughs> I'm going to say it'll probably depend more on how hot it is than anything else, because it's probably going to melt before he actually really gets through it. <laughs> it depends on how tenacious of a chewer your dog is. My dog would sit and work on this until he was done with it. So it probably would take him, you know, I don't know, half an hour to an hour, yeah, maybe. About. I don't know if it would last a full hour in the sun. No, it's a little <laughs> hot out here. Right. <laughs> it's in the shade. But it's a great way to actually keep your dog cool when they're outside hanging out and keep them busy because it's cold and it's yummy. Well, he looks very pleased to be hanging out with you guys. <laughs> so there's some fruit right there if you guys needed. needed you could take his work on it. <laughs> yeah. And so he's still only 10 months old. Does that still make him a puppy technically? Yes, for a bigger dog like him, it does still make him a puppy. Wow. So what are, <laughs> what are you going to be working with him on as he kind of transitions from puppyhood to adulthood? So a lot of times with puppies, you know, we've got a lot of energy. We like to work with them on manners. So not bolting outdoors, not jumping up on people when they greet them. And then we do basics like sit down, come when called, and loosely swapping. Okay. Those are the skills that I like to see with young dogs. And so loosely, bleh. sorry yeah. about that. Loosely That's a hard one. swapping <laughs> is a really useful skill for people. Um, how would you train a dog to do loose leash walking, not pulling on the leash? Sure. So, it has a lot of uh, pieces to it, so it's important to uh, break it down. You want to first work on focus and then see if you can get your dog to walk with you and remain focused. And the whole time you're giving them yummy treats in order to encourage them to stay with you. The whole idea with loose leash walking is that they understand about walking with you. The leash is not for steering. It's really just there in case my dog forgets <laughs> and I need to have extra control, right? But really, they should be sticking with me and walking with me the whole time. So I give them lots of yummy treats for just staying with me as I walk. And okay. is, is eye contact a big part of that as well? Absolutely. That's that focus that I was talking about. I really like to reinforce my dog for giving me eye contact for offering that as we... <laughs> he just gave us a really big dirt. <laughs> I like He's to so excited about everything. everything. <laughs> because more than anything, if we're out in the world and my dog sees something exciting, I want them to look at me and go, oh my gosh, didn't you see that? And then I can reinforce for that. I can give them cookies. And it's all a positive experience. And also, if they're looking at you, they may not be looking at other distracting things in the environment. Like a squirrel, a car. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, well I think. Um, yeah, we are, we are full of all the information I think we can, we can use for the summertime. We want to thank you guys so much. Uh, thank you to everyone. Thank you, JJ. Thank you, 
everyone who helped out today. And of yeah. course, thank you so much, Healthy Spot, for letting us steal your Instagram and share some of our, our tips at home. <laughs> 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 as, as we close on Han, just, or sorry, on Chewy, just having a grand old time in Barks and Rec. Um, we hope you guys will check out all of our adoptables, and you can learn about all of our other virtual program offerings at our website, which is annenbergpetspace.org. Yep, that's going to have all your links and all your good stuff. And if you're interested in a wonderful dog like Chewy or a wonderful cat like Martin, they are on our website. Uh, also, be sure to sign up for our newsletter so you guys can get updates on everything going on here and new animals as well. Um, so thank you guys for joining us today. We appreciated it so much. And thank you again, Healthy Spot. We really appreciate it. And we love you guys. Partner with us forever. Yes. <laughs> Bye, Spot. guys.